to the WonderCon panel for CW's groundbreaking new series, Kung Fu. Uh, my name is Hilarietta Ng, Senior Editor of TV at Entertainment Tonight, and I'm so excited to have with me today the amazing, talented cast and creative team uh, to give us a glimpse behind the show and, and what we can all expect. So um, without further ado, let me introduce the panelists. First, we have co-showrunner Christina Kim, co-showrunner Bob Barron, Olivia Liang, who plays the heroine of the story, Nikki. Tai Ma, who plays Nikki's father, Jin. Ken Hua Tan, who plays Nikki's uh, mother, Mei Li. John Prasida, who plays uh, Nikki's med school brother, Ryan. Shannon Dang, who plays Nikki's tech whiz older sister, Althea. Gavin Stenhouse, who plays Nikki's ex and um, assistant district attorney, Evan. Eddie Liu, who plays Henry, a Chinese history buff, and um, also a martial arts expert. Vanessa Kai, who plays Nikki's mentor and spiritual guide, Pei Ling. And last but certainly not least, Tony Chung, who, is, uh, who plays Althea's fiance, Dennis. Yeah, let's start with um, Christina. First of all, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what Kung Fu is, is all about? Kung Fu is a action adventure family drama featuring this amazing cast. Um, I think we have a little bit of, of everything for everyone in that we have amazing character stories. We've got a love triangle that's really hot. We've got some of the best Kung Fu on TV, I, um, I will have to say. <laughs> and it's not bragging, it's pretty amazing. Um, and then we've just got so much heart. Like this family is an Asian American family. I'm so proud to have this on TV to show, you know, just a really realistic representation um, of this family that I think everyone's going to relate to. So, yeah, and the show is is also a reinterpretation of the 1970s series, correct? Um, so, what was it about this original premise that you felt um, was right for a modern day, you know, retelling? Well, it's a beloved property. Warner Brothers has been wanting to remake it for quite a while. Um, so when they came to me, I was really excited because I do remember it being on TV when I was a kid and my older brothers would watch it. Um, you know, the lead of the show was was not Asian American. Um, and so that was something that was really important for me in updating it is that when we cast um, the lead, that A, it was a woman. I thought it was time to reimagine it with a strong kick-ass woman and that she had to be fully Asian American. So, you know, we, we looked you know, searched high and low for and found Olivia and we just felt so lucky it was meant to be, so. Bob, I want to bring you into the conversation too. Yeah, why did it feel like the right time to kind of bring a new version of Kung Fu into the world and, and what changes did you feel were most important to make to bring the story forward into 2021? The thing that for me was really resonant was uh, just the large ensemble cast and the large family like it's very much a lone hero's journey like we're telling Nikki's story but you know so many hero narratives are really about the individual and not about the community and like the web of support and love around them and so you know reading Christina's script like I came on after you know sort of at the halfway point they had they had done some of the pilot but had been shut down because of COVID and it was reading the script and then seeing the picture of the cast all assembled like there was just like an electricity off of everyone, like this sense of this large cast of characters that we could tell a hero story that wasn't just about one person accomplishing everything, but a story about, you know, a, a, a loving, you know, but complicated family and like all the people that Nikki relies on and needs in her life. So I was just very moved by the project and um, I've been very lucky to be a part of it ever since. I do want to talk to the cast too, and, and I guess we'll start with Olivia because this you're essentially the heroine of the story and, and everything kind of revolves around you and your character. Um, can you tell us a little bit about who Nikki is and what intrigued you the most about her? Yeah, um, you know, I, I always say when people are like, what drew you to the role of Nikki? I'm like, um, the fact, the pure fact that she's an Asian American woman. Cause we, as Asian American actors, we don't get a lot of those in our inboxes. It's usually, you know, an ethnically ambiguous character or their open ethnicity. And so to have just someone who I know for sure I can represent 
that's exciting in, in and of itself already. But um, as I was reading the script and the sides that were provided, I was like, oh, okay, so I don't have to act at all. Nikki is just <laughs> my experience. Um, I mean, Christina wrote it so beautifully and she really captured what it feels like to be Asian American, first generation, um, you know, daughter to immigrant parents and just to be seen was attractive for me. And so, um, yeah, I didn't really have to do much. It just felt like a continuation of all of our experiences and the stories that we are already living out in the world. Um, yeah, Nikki is, Nikki is a girl who is trying to figure out her path in life and what she's meant to do. And I think everyone can relate to that. She's kind of, there's like a double fish out of water story that I think a lot of Asian Americans can feel. Yeah, you, you kind of mentioned this too. I mean, we often don't see an Asian woman as a central figure in American TV, right? So how has that impacted your approach in, in playing Nikki? It is both constantly in the back of my mind and I'm constantly trying to push it away. Um, I think the whole cast, we, we talk about it a lot, you know, how historic this show is and how important it is for our community and not just our community to, to feel seen, but for other communities to see us and remember that we're part of their lives and their narrative too. Um, but yeah, uh, if we, if we're constantly thinking about that, I think that would, uh, just be a lot of pressure. So I try to keep it away, um, keep it at bay and just focus on telling this story that just happens to feature our faces. Ty and Kang, I mean, you've both been in the business for, for a minute <laughs> and, and have seen a lot. Uh, how, how has your experience making the show been different from, you know, previous projects that you've both been on? I think that um, being a part of Kung Fu has been so different in terms of the energy of starting a new adventure. For me, on so many different levels, working in a brand new country, working under a brand new culture, and yet this adventure has been so rich and so um, indelible in so many different ways. I can't even begin to express all the different ways in which this particular experience has had an impact, not just on myself as an actress, but on myself as a person um, and being a part of this. Um, so that has been the major difference. I. Like I said, I, I can't begin to even express how amazing this particular part of my life as a 58-year-old um, Asian young. actress. <laughs> you <young. know. laughs> For this to happen at this time of my life, it, it is remarkable. You know, this show is there are many firsts, you know, obviously. You know, I believe it's the first a dramatic series that involves an Asian American family on prime time. I think that's a first. When we, we see us, we see ourselves in sitcom situations. So we never are seen in this kind of dramatic setting. That's a first. Uh, I believe, you know, Christina is the first Asian American show woman. I think that's a first. Um, I think, um, you know, the, the, just to be here, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm more of a feature guy, you know? I mean, for me to do a TV series, it's got to mean a lot to me. And I look at, you know, this, this cast, this, this young, beautiful, talented cast, um, you know, they're going to do all the heavy lifting. <laughs> so it's make my life a lot easier. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are so good. I'm so proud of them, you know, and I've seen a lot of people come and go for many, many decades. And all of these faces that you're seeing today, you're going to see for a very, very, very long time. I'm so proud of them, you know. And, and for me, the attraction is that I get an opportunity to play a different kind of dad. I've been doing a lot of dads lately. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> I really want this dad to be the dad that is more, you know, understanding, uh, mm. more loving, mm. uh, more open, more inclusive, you know. And and I think this is the kind of Asian American dad that I want to see right now. You know, and it's these are tough times for all of us, given the climate out there. And I think we need all the nurturing we can. Can I just say, I think we all uh, teared up a little bit hearing the patriarch of the show tell us that he's proud of us. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where are the tissues? Oh my gosh. What? This is a fantasy <laughs> show indeed. <laughs> John and Shannon, how did you guys create this strong familial bond? I think, well, I met John first um, when we were testing and it's funny because I play an older sister and I mean, I'm an older sister in real life and I have a younger brother and he actually reminds me a lot about John. Uh, he's just like cool and chill and I immediately gravitated towards him and immediately treated him like my younger brother, which I'm sorry, sometimes <laughs> I'm like, I can come off again in real life and like bossy and I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm doing it to Ryan and I'm doing it to John. Like, um, so I think there was that immediate fun connection yeah for sure uh yeah definitely just it works i mean again um i have an older sister um i'm the youngest so it's like really just feels really natural to yeah. be told what to do at all times you know what i mean um <laughs> <laughs> we've all connected like really quickly it's crazy how how close we've become whether it be because naturally just that's just how we are as people or because of our asian experience um Regardless, is like it's it's real. It's like a real family, like all of us. I'm really grateful to Christina because I and I think she, uh, there's a brilliance there because I think she was able to see that we would meld and we would mold in a certain way and and it, it really happened that way. It was just you know from the get go when we started shooting the pilot in March, I just felt a connection to literally everyone you see here. Um, Eddie and and Gavin, both of your characters. Um have romantic ties to Nikki, I suppose. Um, Eddie and my character have very different um, sides to offer to the to Nikki's story. Evan is, you know, he's an assistant district attorney and he is Nikki's ex. Um, and I think that their relationship growing up, they went through so much that, that they've got this innate um, bond that is not easily shaken. And even though uh, Nikki spent some years away and Evan has tried to seemingly move on, I think that that's the kind of thing that we all remember our first loves and we all remember how deep those scars cut. <laughs> uh, and I think that's something that will always draw them together. Where we pick up on the story, Nikki is at a crossroads in her life. She's at a huge turning point in her life and some things way beyond her control. She gets hit with like a meteor of circumstance where it's, she's, I can say quarter life crisis. That was in the deadline article last year, right? Um, she's going through a quarter life crisis and she's gone through a, a, a change within herself where we pick up on her. She's gone through this change already. She's already finding who she is. And so at this point she's, her past is more or less behind her or so, or so she hopes and feels right. And so, when 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 Nikki meets Henry, uh, I think Henry connects with her on, for example, in one very tangible way is they both have an affinity and appreciation for Kung Fu. Henry is a complete stranger to Nikki when he meets her. And so he knows nothing about her, can't judge her for who she was or what she might have done in the past. And so uh, the way I see it is there is so much potential for all that can be good simply because we, it, it, there's there's a clean slate there and so um and also because of what's happening in the story henry proves to be quite useful in helping just because he's uh he's smart about a few uh um historical things so uh, henry comes into play in that regard you're not the only one that becomes useful my friend Oh, here it comes. <laughs> I'm reclaiming my time, Gavin. I'm reclaiming my time. Thank you. 
Vanessa, I mean, Pei Ling is a woman who I guess, I suppose becomes Nikki's surrogate mother and, and mentor during her time away as she's kind of learning the kind of the Shaolin way, right? Uh, what intrigued mm -hmm. you most about their relationship and getting to kind of dig into that? What I love is um, that Pei Ling is not, uh, that she sees herself in, in Nikki. Um, as it hints in the in the pilot, right? Um, in the family dynamic, um, in the struggles of dealing with family. Um, and I think there's something that I really value. Uh, whatever lesson that I have learned, I would hope to that someone else could learn from my own mistakes. So I think there's uh, there's that wonderful relationship of, of of that 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 draws me up. How can we how can I help? She really is yeah. like that in my, like, now that we've gotten to know each other, like, I, I think she is that for all of us. If you know Vanessa, like, she listens. Um, yes. And then she digests. And then she has something very profound and wise to say afterwards. <laughs> you guys all kind of touched on this a little bit, but I feel like the show represents a big moment for Asian representation in, in kind of mainstream media. What does it mean to kind of be a part of something that values the Asian experience? Everything. There's no other reason to do it for me. You know, we, we make our choices in our lives, you know? And if we can move, like, I think Shannon said this, if we can move the needle forward, okay? That's what I want to be involved in. You know, we all have choices to make, right? Yeah. So this is the choice that I make anytime that we could move the needle forward just a little bit. If everybody contribute to that movement, we're in a better place. I grew up like in Australia watching like American TV. And although it is um, an Asian American experience, it's so relatable, like on a global scale. Um, literally I saw like, <laughs> would watch with my family, like we would watch martial law with Thai, you know, we'd sit around and watch like on, on like national television at like 7 p.m. and we'd watch that and we were all like enthralled. We're not sure why, probably because it was like an Asian experience and like we get to see that on TV and that really meant a lot to us. We bonded over that. Um, and to see um, an Asian American family onto there will speak to my family back home. We'll speak to a family in Canada. We'll speak to a family in New Zealand. Um, you know, not only just from an Asian experience, but also from like, you know, ethnically diverse experience as well it's it's what i love about the show it, it relates to like everybody i feel like a chinese family has very specific dynamics built into it just with the, <laughs> the relationship with the uh, parents and with the <laughs> siblings and you know are there any issues or like culturally specific topics here that you're you're digging into that you want to explore i'm in an interesting position because i'm korean american so, you know, for me writing this story, it was really important to me that there's the shared Asian American experience. And I think that we all kind of understand the language of what that is, but there's also specific Chinese American Chinese stories. So it's really important. And when Bob came onto the project too, the two of us, you know, really wanted to make sure that we got things right. I didn't want to write from a Korean perspective. I'm always checking in with our wonderful actors. So there's, there's a lot of elements that are universal, but also very specific to, to the Asian culture. So it's, it's really fun to dig into. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about the martial arts training. You know, it's an incredible sport. It's graceful, it's powerful. It makes me feel both of those things. Um, and of course we have an amazing stunt team who is like world-class. I think we have the best stunt team yeah. on earth and you can take that to the bank, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, the dance background was helpful, but like martial arts was truly the hardest thing I've ever put my body through. We're just so used to seeing people with our faces only do the martial arts and then we're silently doing that. And then there's no depth of character in what we previously seen. So I think what, what I feel so proud and privileged to be a part of in, in, within Kung Fu is like, here are these people doing top notch level martial arts. And yet they are fully fleshed out four-dimensional characters who live and breathe and 
are more than just Chinese American, are more than just a Kung Fu master. Representation is, is, is larger than us wanting to see ourselves and feel seen and heard. It's, um, like I said in the beginning, it's so that other people remember that we exist too, because there has, because of the lack of representation, you know, their worldview isn't, isn't opened up to include us in their narrative. And so, like Eddie was saying, like putting ourselves front and center and it, this isn't an Asian show. Like we happen to be Asian, but the, the story is universal. It's about family. It's about friendship. It's about finding oneself and, and figuring out what their purpose is. I come from a completely different country and, and my, my learning about representation is, is it really has been a very, very steep, um, uh, uh, curve ever since I've come to this part of the world. But I find it a real privilege to be at the epicenter of an energy of change. And maybe it's because I come from another country that I'm able to see and feel this wave of energy and change. And in the middle of the Kung Fu experience of making this series, I see this parallel of this energy of change happening within this entire production. That is a real gift, I can tell you. That, that is something that is so going to affect, I think, how the, the series is going to be felt, how the story is going to be told, and how the stories, I think, are going to be received. It certainly permeates through every single heart of every single crew and cast and everybody. I, I feel it all the time. We have the opportunity to reshape and redefine thinking and perception of who we are, millions at a time. Okay, we have that potential. So because the audience is already a willing partner, that's half of the game. You want people to listen. So if they're willing to see your show, that's 50% of the game. And what we say is important. That's the other 50%. So really, what we're doing is important. Don't, don't, don't think of it as, oh, it's just entertainment. It's not just entertainment. This is global. I mean, people watch American shows everywhere. I mean, really, to me, that's always been understanding the gravity of what we do. And for Asian American parents out there, if your children have any inkling about being part of this, you know, like, they give them a camera. It's okay. They want to write? Let them write. You know, they don't have to just be doctors and lawyers and, you know, <laughs> really, because remember this, you know, brain surgeons say one brain at a time. We can really change millions of mine at a time. You know, Christine and I read maybe 300 scripts. You know, we looked all over. And like a, a lot of the writers we gravitated towards and ended up bringing aboard the show were young, like uh, Chinese American or just Asian American writers who put it on the page and said, I don't care that the market doesn't exist for this yet. I don't care that I haven't seen a network drama that's all Asian characters. I'm going to write my pilot, my dream pilot. And like, they got it on the page and you're reading it and you're like, we're the first network show where this is like the perfect sample for it. And so they sort of dreamed and imagined like one day that like this kind of show could get made. And so then like we brought them aboard to the show so we could now make this show. It's like, it's a damn bursting kind of moment. And I think, I think the cast and the writers all feel that. Like this was an opportunity that people have been waiting for and finally like the door is open. Um, and it's really exciting. And Christine and I look at each other and we talk about our experiences, you know, coming up and how it, like, we wouldn't have written a spec pilot. Like, I wouldn't have written a gay identity spec pilot. I don't think Christina would have written an Asian identity, you know, spec pilot like 15, 20 years ago, because people would have looked at it and go, what do I do with this? You know? And it's like, and I think things are, ch things are changing now. So there's this energy from everyone who's participating in this, that this is a unique moment. 
and like an incredible opportunity. And I think we all feel like really privileged to be a part of it. This is such a dream come true because growing up, I grew up um, when I was little in the suburbs of Chicago and I was, we were the only Asian family um, in our school. So no one looked like me, no one looked like me on television. So I think Olivia, you touched on this on our group chat of, you know, having someone that looks like you on TV as a young Asian American person, like what an amazing thing. I had a moment in the house um, when I was cutting together our trailer several months ago, I have two young boys and my eight year old who sees everything because it's COVID and work is home. He was over looking over my shoulder and saw our sizzle reel. And he was like, mama, they're Korean. And I was like, they're not Korean, but I hear you. Yes, they look like me. <laughs> and just that moment where I was like, oh my gosh, an eight-year-old who's used to watching American TV, seeing what I'm working on and noticing that, like I literally just got teary, you know. And I had, you know, another moment like that where it's just run and gun to get a pilot made, to get it going. And, you know, you're just, there's so many pieces. You're not thinking about the macro sometimes, but when we were um, shooting, the, doing the camera test that first day in Vancouver, you know, over, about a year ago, um, I, there was a moment where I was just looking at the monitors in Video Village, a place that I've been for many years on many different TV shows, and I saw all of your guys' faces, and it just hit me. I was like, this is different. This is not what TV looks like all the time. And I just started getting teary again. <laughs> and I was sitting next to one of the producers and he kind of put his hand on my arm. He's like, it's pretty awesome. So, you know, it's, it's a wonderful, I'm, I am thrilled. And I'm so thankful to all of you for bringing it to life. Like truly the dream cast. And that's all the time we have. Um, thank you so much to the cast and producers of Comfy for being here today. Uh, for WonderCon. Um, I hope you guys all check out the show on the CW when it premieres. And yeah, thank you so much and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much.